They learned nothing after 2010 or after 2014 or even after this past presidential election in 2016. But now, after losing four straight House special elections just this spring, some Democrats are finally realizing what has been obvious for a while. You can't win elections unless you're running on something. And by the way, normal people don't seem to care for Nancy Pelosi. After their party's shocking defeat in Tuesday's race in Georgia, several prominent Democrats conceded it might be time to find an actual message, maybe even a new leader in Congress, one who doesn't embody the attitudes of the richest zip code in San Francisco. You That's think right. Nancy Pelosi is more toxic than Donald Trump? You know what? The honest answer is, in some areas of the country, yes, she is. Uh, it's clear that I think across the board in the Democratic Party, we need new leadership. It's time for a new generation of leadership in the party. Nancy Pelosi was a great speaker. She is a great leader. But her time has come and gone. I believe that she is not the leader for the future of the Democratic Party. Oh, nonsense, says Pelosi. She describes herself as a remarkably impressive leader, despite a half a decade of uninterrupted defeats. So you want me to sing my praises? Is that what you're saying? Why should I? Well, I'm a, a master legislator. I am a, a strategic, politically astute leader. I am a, a, my uh, uh, leadership is recognized by many around the country, and that is why I'm able to attract the support that I do. Did you hear? <laughs> Did you hear that? It sounds like an SNL sketch. Because I'm good enough. I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Doggone it, people like me. But the question remains, do Democrats need a new message and a new leader to win back the middle of the country? Jose Aristamuno is a former deputy press secretary at the Democratic National Committee, and he joins us now. Jose, thanks for coming on tonight. So, Good um, to be with you. Ju just to the election on, on Tuesday, nobody on the left, and honestly, few on the right called this. The polls suggested a much closer race um, than the results indicated. Do you think there's any possibility that Russia might have been involved in that race, working on behalf of Karen Handel? Look, the, the reality here, Tucker, is that Georgia was supposed to be won by Republicans by at least 20 That's a joke, points. Jose. Are you, wait, you got to laugh or else <laughs> I think you're why, taking it seriously. Okay, which is why okay. I'm not answering your question. But look, back to my point is, okay. Georgia was supposed to be won by Republicans by at least 20 points. It was won by Republicans by four points. Why? Because Republicans keep on losing their base. We are gaining momentum. We are going to win the House in 2018, I'm telling you. Remember, Georgia 6 wasn't supposed to be even be competitive. And it was because this is a referendum on the president. Okay. People are tired of this nonsense. Okay, so it sounds, I mean, I guess, you know, if I were a partisan, which I'm not really, but I would be pretty happy with your response because what you seem to be saying is everything is fine. Make no changes. We're doing great. We're going to win. When in fact, as you know, as a, as a numbers matter, Karen Handel won a higher percentage of the vote than Donald Trump won in that same district in November. So actually you're moving in the wrong direction, but you don't see, you don't see any need for a course correction at all. Look, talking about change, talking about Nancy Pelosi, she's a, she's a great American, she's a great Democrat. Nancy Pelosi is not going anywhere. Nancy Pelosi is here to stay. At the same time, though, let me just say, Democrats across the country, we are recruiting young blood, new Democrats to be candidates so that, that they can run, okay? And, and so they can impact solutions and look for solutions that real Americans are looking for. But she's not going anywhere. What are they going to run on? Oh, okay. Look, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not here to attack Nancy Pelosi. I feel sorry for Nancy Pelosi. Um, my only point, I guess, would be that she lives in a very rarefied world. I mean, she represents a 100% urban district, one of the richest congressional districts in America, yeah. that is well, also one of the most liberal districts. Trump won sure. under 10% in her district. So the question is, can someone who represents a place like that appeal to the voters you need, who are not hard partisans, but sort of on the fence? But you're obviously not going to engage in that. So let me just ask you a question. Yeah. What should Democrats run on? Like, what, what's the message of the Democratic Party? Well, re really quickly, though, on Nancy Pelosi being out of touch because she's wealthy and yeah. she is, or current president, President Donald Trump is out of touch. You want to talk about a rich guy? It's Donald Trump. You want to talk a guy who has more money than all of us put together? That's the president right. of the United States. So that, that's look, not... I, look, I'm not attacking... No, but you're, you're kind of missing my point. I'm not attacking Pelosi for being rich, though it happens that she is. 
Yeah. I'm merely saying that if you're trying to win over voters with a specific set of concerns, you want a leader who understands those concerns. And does she? And if she does, what are those concerns? Like, what are the Democrats going to run on? What's the message? The Democrats are going to run on American values, okay? We need to create jobs, real jobs, job. okay? Real jobs, real jobs. We're talking about infrastructure. We're talking about real Americans, middle class jobs. Not this nonsense that we have a current president that all he's doing is trying to divide us. He's obsessed about the wall. We just we just learned that he now wants to put a solar panel on the wall. Give me a break. Let's talk about real issues. So you're going to run Democrats against Trump again? We okay, so no, I, I mean, look, I, I know you don't like Trump. You guys ran a bunch of campaigns against Trump. Didn't work. So let's get to what the message is, the Democratic message. You say it's jobs, number one, jobs but not low jobs, like middle-class jobs. That's one? Absolutely. Middle-class jobs are important. We need immigration reform, real immigration reform. We're a nation of laws, but we're also a nation of, of immigrants. So whoever, look, we, are, we, are, we understand what, what the American people need, which is why we're going across wait, the wait, country. Wait, 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 wait a second. Wait, I'm, I'm, totally, I'm totally confused. You're running okay. simultaneously on the idea you're going to create more jobs, yeah. but you want more low-wage, low-skilled people to move here. Immigration How reform? do those two work in tandem? Sure. You can call it what you want, but you're saying we need more immigrants, so, but we also need more jobs. If we have too few jobs, why would we import more immigrants? Immigrants pay taxes. Immigrants that we're talking about billions of dollars being injected into our economy, Tucker. More immig immigration, legal immigration, good immigration, expanding our immigration system is only going to help us and create more jobs. Look okay, at the numbers. So how, just uh, t t tell me, how will, actually, I, I'm familiar with the numbers. I don't think that you are. How will importing millions more poor people create more middle class jobs? And where's that happened exactly? All America, immigrants whatever? all immigrants are not poor people. That is a stereotype. That's actually not true. A lot of immigrants but, are hardworking. Well, actually, the majority, uh, the majority of our, the majority of our, I'm not saying they're not hardworking. I'm just saying they're poor. The majority of our immigrants are poor. And so how will importing more of them create more jobs? How has well, that happened? Num number where one, has that happened? And sure. how is it going to happen again? Well, a few things. Number one, we know that a lot of immigrants, by the way, that are under the H-1B visas, which are too low, right, too low of a number, they're engineers, they're scientists, they are coming to our country to study in the best university, and then you have the other immigrants who want to do jobs that a majority of Americans don't want to do in the first place. But how is that creating jobs? I don't think you've thought this through, Jose. So, so I guess here's, this may be the problem. You may be illustrating okay. right now the problem. If you're going to have a message, a program, and say to voters, here's what I'm going to bring you if you elect me, you have to be able to explain it. So you're basically saying, we're going to bring you more jobs, but we're also going to bring a lot more poor people, but somehow that's all going to work, but I'm not exactly sure how, and then throw in a bumper sticker or two and a slogan, but like, trust us? Don't you think you should think through exactly how you're going to create those jobs? Immigration, more immigration, legal immigration into the system is going to create more jobs, more people that want jobs that Americans don't want. That is a fact. That is the truth. But that's not, that's not creating more jobs. That's taking, as you just said, jobs that Americans don't want. I thought the idea was to create more middle-class jobs. How is going to we can do bringing both. in we, like, waves of new low-skilled workers? Yeah, but how does Why that work? Why can't we do both? Do you know? What have you thought this through at all? I mean, that's why you guys keep losing. Because <laughs> you say dumb things that don't make any sense. I mean, look, I'm not against immigration. I'm totally for making middle-class jobs. I just don't know how they work together, and neither do you. It would, and maybe it you should be figure better. it out. It would be better. And then you it can explain to people, and then they'll support you. It would be better if we had a president mm -hmm. that was willing to work with the Democrats. That would be nice, but that's not, that's not happening. Look, we got a president that is being investigated, as you know, time and time again. I don't know if he'll make it to 2020. Right. What do you think? Yeah, Trump's bad. <laughs> All right, I don't know. Jose, I, I, I don't know. But even at this rate, even if he doesn't, Democrats will not be the beneficiary of it. Trump may be bad, but voters are in no mood to support Democrats over him. I've just noticed that. But that's whatever. not true. Come back. When you got Georgia. that, I'll figure it out for me. We're getting better. <laughs> Good luck, Jose.